Luca Posami. This is Luca, not Lucas. Luca. I used to call him Lucas all the time, and he always corrected me. He's a goalie by trade. He's hel he helped out immensely in the winter program. And he helped my daughter, Samantha, with the young kids. And again, had a lot of patience with the young ones. Manuel Dominguez. Manny comes across as a funny guy, but he's, he's leading my defense and he's helped my defenders uh, communicate with each other. He can chew you out and make you laugh about it and smile, and he gets the point across. There's, he's one of the reasons we're going for the state cup. And lastly, um, Hannah Stewart by uh, Stephen Simonelli. <laughs> Hannah I've had since she was six years old. Uh, she's really dedicated, and I know her dad is watching down from heaven. Her mom's here as a coach. She has the U-12 girls, and she's had the U-10 girls. She's moved up. Very dedicated. <laughs> I'm very proud to give this to Hannah. Thank you, Steve. Any, would, anyone, would anyone over here like to give a speech? I thought so. <laughs> that, I was like that at their age, too. Uh, we just want to thank these coaches for, for doing what they do. Um, I might have a seven-year-old to come along one day that wants to play uh, uh, soccer, and so maybe you might, you might be coaching her. Okay? Uh, Madeline uh, English, we're there every night. Thank you very much. I'd like to I wait to like to take this time to thank Mr. Hallen uh, and the City Council for the awards. I think it's important to recognize the young people. Uh, it helped. It uh, was nice for me to get one. I didn't expect it. Uh, it's not really necessary for somebody my age, but these young people. Uh, if anybody knows me, I'm a former Marine. Uh, I hold these kids to the highest standards, uh, so they get chewed out just as much as anybody. And uh, they keep coming back, and there's a reason why the Everett Soccer Club is, is very successful in the Middlesex League. Thank you. Thank you very much. How about a group picture? Come on, guys, come up and get a group picture. <laughs> Everybody, group. I just want to be in the uh, Can we do, only do it up here? Councilors, if you'd like to, come and stand behind them. Oh, we're going over here. Stop. Wait, I'm going in the middle. Madeline English is our home field. Bye, thank you. you. Thank you all.
regular meeting of the City Council will now come to order. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Council Capone. Here. Council Della Sola. Here. Council DeFlorio. Here. Council Hanlon. Here. Council Matuski. Here. Council McKinnon. Here. Council McLaughlin. Here. Council Napolitano. Here. Council Sani. Here. Council Simonelli. Here. Council DePiro. Here. Eleven members present, Mr. President. Will the audience please join us in saluting the flag? Put allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Chairman, we may stand remain yes. standing for a few minutes. Uh, just the passing of Henry Goyesh, who was a firefighter for several, several years. Oh, who was a firefighter for several years, and we, we buried him this morning. Uh, sorely missed. Please read the first item, Mr. Clerk. <clears throat> item number one is in accordance with Section 6-4 of the Everett City Charter Public Hearing. It will be held on Monday, June 12, 2017, 7 p.m. at the Peter J. McCarran City Council Chamber. The subject matter is public input on the proposed operating budget for fiscal year 2018. Is there a motion to hold well, motion open the public hearing? hearing. Uh, second. second. Motion made and seconded to open the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Public hearing is now open. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of the budget? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to the budget? Is there a motion to Make close a motion the public to close hearing? The public hearing. Second. Motion made and seconded to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Table action motion on the order. To open, uh, or do you have to ask? Public participation. Make a motion to open uh, public participation. Is there a second on the motion? Is there a second to open? Second. Motion made and seconded to open public participation. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to address the City Council about any particular subject? Is there a motion, Council? Make a motion to close public Second. participation. Motion made and seconded to close public participation. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Yes. Okay. If we could please take item uh, 37, suspend rules and take item 37. Motion made and seconded to suspend the rules and take item number 37. All those in favor? Opposed, the ayes have it. Item 37, resolution sponsored by Councilor John F. Hanlon that the Committee on Commun Community and Business Development hold public hearing to include ISD licensing and property owner to determine whether sufficient facts exist to revoke the re repair shop license at 36 Mystic due to unpaid fines and unpermitted alterations to the premises, resulting in a cease and desist from the building department. Mr. Chairman, Councilor Hanlon. I'd like to make a motion that we refer this to the Committee on uh, Business Development and to invite the, uh, someone from ISD, the <coughs> licensee and the property owner uh, to that meeting and uh, to determine whether or not the license should be revoked. Second. second. Motion was Mr. made and seconded on, on the motion, Council DeFlorio. Excuse me, is this a license through the building inspector or what's, what's this license for? Because, Repair shop. Well, from my understanding, this is in court. Is this the same issue that's in court? I believe the issue that's in court, and I've gotten very little right on this, I think the uh, issue that's in court is uh, an eviction. So it's not? No. The one that's in court, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. It's an eviction. It is the property owner in an eviction case between the property <coughs> owner and the, pro and the uh, licensee. Okay, and what is this, what, what are we doing with this? Cease and desist? It would be to see if facts exist to revoke the repair shop license. Okay, but that has nothing to do with us. This is in court, is what I'm trying to say. Not so the I'm eviction. Confused. No, no, no. Sorry. If I could have the uh, sponsor uh, explain this. Yeah, it's not. It's Mr. Chairman. It's not the uh, this matter, whether they have a license or not, is is what should go into the committee. The fact that whether they should occupy the building is up to the courts, which is a, a case now in before the courts for evicting him, but it's got nothing to do with the license that he holds. We're trying to find out if the license that he holds is a valid license. That, that's all we're trying to determine. It's my, if, are there any other questions on the item? Council Matuski? Do we, 
The microphone, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Do I, I don't recall voting on this license uh, at this address. Did we, when was the last time it was voted on? Yeah, it's a repair shop license, so it doesn't come up for renewal before the council. So it goes before the city? Only court. the very first time it comes before oh, the, the council. First That's time. why. Okay, I'm not familiar with the whole case, so I, I really don't have much to add. Thank you. Councilor Dallasola? Just curious, where is this at? I know it's 36 Mystic Street, but what, what building is this? It's um, almost all the way down the left-hand side. It's a white, gray building. Okay, I know, I know exactly. Okay. If there are no other questions from the chair, if I may, it's my understanding that the city um, revoked the initial cease and desist order they issued in sentence in court. I really don't believe we should take action on this. It's at the council's will, but I uh, will not support taking action on this. Well, the action is not us taking any action. All that we're doing is referring it to committee and let the committee decide what they want to do with it. That's what the committee's for. That the council's will. Councilor McLaughlin? Mr. President, I would just ask what the motion would be after committee because I think you're, I think you're on track, council, uh, President. I think we should discuss this, but I'm not sure that there should be any action taken if it's a, a lawsuit in a, in a court room. But I think that we should sort out whether or not the licensee is holding a valid license. But I'm not sure what the action would be after after that committee meeting. Uh, can you explain the process of what would happen once we... I think yeah. the, what the councilor wants to do is have it go to a committee and see if there is enough factual evidence to indeed revoke the license. But I would, if... But it, and I'll ask you this question, Mr. If we determine it is or isn't, do we need to take action on that? Or is it just a fact-finding um, research? It would be up to the committee to... Uh, issue a report stating whether or not revocation is in order. If revocation is in order, it has to be published. Uh, a public hearing must be held. Very similar. Revocation is always the same way that the license is granted. So it will have to be a public hearing. It will have to be set, public hearing held, and then a vote taken by the council as it was on the original license on whether or not to revoke. So no matter what the outcome of the committee meeting is, we have to move forward at that point. Is that what you're saying? No, if, the council, if the committee should uh, uh, determine that uh, uh, sufficient facts does not, do not exist, yep. then they would issue uh, their report stating that and no public hearing, no, no such uh, matter, would, no, no public hearing would be held and everything would remain the same. Okay, thank you for the clarification, Mr. Monarato. Just our clerk of committees inform me that if the courts do indeed support the eviction, he would have to revoke his license regardless. So I really think we should lay this on the table until the courts make a decision. But I know Councilor McKinnon is waiting to speak. Uh, my, uh, my question has already been answered. Thank you. Councilor Sani. I don't see a problem going into committee because all we're going to do is find out information. And by the time we have a committee meeting, maybe we can have the city solicitor there also to yeah. let us know what's going on, if any actions in the it's court. It's a public meeting. hearing. In the committee meeting. But we can discuss and have the city solicitor at least let us know if we can go further or talk about it. If she's not, unless she's here tonight and she can let us know. Councilor DeFlorio. I'm sorry, but I don't believe we should get involved. Okay, this belongs in the court matters. Let the court decide, then let the court come to us and tell us what we should do. This is, it's got nothing to do with us. We don't get involved with court, with lawyers, or anything else. We're here to protect the taxpayers. And if we do anything wrong, they're gonna hold it against us. So I, I, I don't feel this is something, let the courts decide and let the courts let us tell us what we should do. That's, that's my opinion, so I'm voting no against this. Councilor Napolitano. I think we're, honestly, I think we're mixing things up here. Um, what goes on in court has to do with an eviction between the landlord and the business owner, period, period. The issue here is regarding um, uh, unpaid fines, which is with the city, unpermanent alterations, which is with the city, and again, whether they are, whether there is an issue or not, that needs to be determined in a committee. And this has zero to do with what's going on with court. Because again, first of all, if there's no issues with unpaid fines and, uh, and, and alterations, then we need, to, we need to identify that and release that issue. If they're going to court and the court decides not to evict them, 
And we do have unpaid fines and un, and, and, and un, uh, permitted alterations. Then we need to drag it back up again. Let's get this out of the way. This has nothing to do with any court action between the, the, uh, the business owner and the landlord. Two separate issues. Let's not mix them. Okay. Let's get give they have a, every right to present their side. We know in a committee that's the place to do that, not here during a regular council meeting. And if they're taking the time to come up here, I hope they understand that we want to make sure we give them a fair po uh, podium to be able to address their what's a, what the, what is being accused. So I, I don't think it's an issue with bringing them to committee. I think that is the prudent course of action, as we've already established in how we do these address these issues. Anything else is not relevant to the question. We're not concerned whether they owe, what, what their issue is with the landlord. We're concerned with what unpaid fines and permitting. And in that respect, if I, and please correct me if I'm wrong through, through the chair to the clerk, that is our position. Our position is to determine whether the license is correct right. yeah. or whether there's violations that warrant a revocation of the license. Responsible for them, we should be paying them. Is it the owner or is it the, yes. All right. Let's not beat this to death during our regular meeting. Let's send this over to committee, get the issue itself addressed, give them an opportunity to, to, to say their side. And whatever happens in the court is going to happen in the court anyway. As the clerk of committees has already has informed us, if they lose in the eviction, the license is revoked irrelevantly. It doesn't, it, it does not excuse them from past due fees or any unpermanent work. And the result is going to be the same. So let's address our, our portion of that and move on. That would be my recommendation, is to, to second the motion to send this to committee. Councilor McLaughlin, do you have any other questions? I, I, agree, with, I agree with Councilor Napolitano. I think that that's the right place to go with this. Um, I just hope that their two issues won't get uh, into one with one another at some point down the road. But I agree with Councilor Napolitano that sending it to committee is the right place to go. Um, I just hope that we're able to keep both issues separate and be able to deal with what we're what we're responsible to deal with now. And if we have to deal with something later on after court finding, we can deal with that at a, at a later date. Um, but I, I support going to committee at this point. Thank you. Okay, Councilor DeFlorio, I think that you have a question for the clerk. Do we have unpaid fines? Yeah, there are unpaid fines to the bill ISD. Because this is going to make a decision whether I want to send it to committee or not. Through the chairs, council. Yeah. Okay, so there, if there's unpaid fines, that's fine. That's all I need. Okay, that take precedent? Yeah. Call for the question, take precedent. Yep. yep. Uh, I'm going to go for a roll call vote here, Mr. Clerk, please. On the motion, Mr. We Chairman, we need a city solicitor at that meeting, too. Yes, I, I did interrupt. Yes, Mr. They're ready to vote. I want, I want the city solicitor at the committee meeting. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah they, they, she's okay. Yes is to refer to community and business development. No is to not. Council Capone. Yes. Council Del Sola. Yes. Council De Florio. Yes. Council Hamlin. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinney. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Sani. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. The Mr. item is uh, referred to the proper committee. Uh, could we please take items 10 through 13 collectively? Motion made and seconded to suspend the rules and take items 10 through 13 collectively. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose the ayes have it. Item number 10 is a petition for a special license for Van Wyan Everett Veterans Memorial Stadium for the City of Everett on Saturday, July 22, 2017. It's for the, uh, the uh, band competition. Item number 11 is a petition for a second class motor vehicle deal of license from Everett Used Cars Incorporated, 70 Chelsea Street. Item number 12 is a petition for a precious metals license from All Checks Cash, 1998, Revere Beach Parkway. And 13 is a petition for a pre precious metals license from Jewelry Exchange at 2076, Revere Beach Parkway. They are all renewals except, of course, the first one. Mr. Chairman. Council McLaughlin. Mr. President, thank you on the motion. I just have one question in regards to item number 10, which is, and I, I've always kind of wondered this when we've given out these special one-day permits, uh, who holds an insurance or liability um, bond for these types of one-day permits? Um, we do this at the Armory also at St. Patrick's time. 
um, of the year. If somebody is to drink too much and a problem is arised, who's responsible as, as a business owner is if it's in their establishment? I um, think in this case it's the city. I think in this case I, I would obviously defer to the city solicitor, but I think in this case we have the insurance policy when it's a city function. So something goes wrong, the city's on the, on the, on the hook for it. Is that, yeah. what, is that correct, Mr. Spanner? When it's a city function. Okay. When it's a private function, that uh, individual organization has to have uh, an insurance policy. Okay. I can only talk about the friendly sun, but we had to, go, we had to have a, a liability insurance policy. So we're insuring this this event at, at the stadium on that night. I'm sure I'm assuming or sure there'll be nothing that happens, but for that one in a million opportunities that something arises, um, I'd just like to know that we're we're crossing our T's and dotting our I's before we set ourselves up for for a headache down the road. Um, so do you know, Mr. President, if this has been um, bonded or insured for a city event? Through our liability. I can't answer that question, Councilor. Okay. Councilor Maybe Napolitano. Councilor Napolitano might have an answer first. Thank you. I don't have the answer, but traditionally these are usually a one-day license covering the liability to the city. Okay, and the expense on that is much different than a private entity that might have to get a license for a more extended period of time or even on an annual basis. So we, we've done these before. I mean, I really would like to get confirmation from the city clerk just for, for everybody's peace of right. mind. But I believe that is the way we've, we've handled these in the past. You get a one-day insurance policy. Do you still have a question, Councilor Hanlon? On the matter? Question? No question. No, I'm sorry. The sorry. question was answered. Councilor Simonelli? Um, what is the event on July 22nd? Mr. Uh, Clerk? That, that event is uh, a band competition. To, uh, I'm sure the good council remembers uh, the old days when they had all the marching band competitions down in Everett Stadium. It's going to be that. It'll be uh, bands from all over the country. Some of the top bands, including the national champions, will be there. So it'll be quite, uh, okay. quite an event. The, the counselor also wants to know how much they're charging for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. Any other questions, counselors? <laughs> Second. Motion made for favorable action on the orders. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Del Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Sani. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Eleven yeas, eleven yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. The orders have passed. Item number two is no response by Councilor Anthony DePiro, President, two point eighteen. Listed sworn weighers for District Gas of Massachusetts. Second. Favorable action, Mr. Chairman. Motion made and seconded for favorable action. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Del Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor Hammond. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Sani. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Living age, zero nays, Mr. President. The order has passed. Item number three is uh, an order sponsored by Council Anthony DePiro, President, pointing 18 listed auxiliary police for an unpaid term of one year, expiring June 2018. Favorable action on the order. Second motion. Second. Motion made and seconded for favorable action on the order. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Council Capone. Yes. Council Della Sola. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Politano. Yes. Councilor Sani. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. Living yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. Order has passed. I believe they're in the hallway. Yes.
Oh, no, that's up to the president. <laughs> Councilor Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll just wait until they all enter the room. Mr. President, I just want to thank, uh, I had the oppo opportunity to meet these gentlemen tonight. I want to thank them for the service to this community. These are unpaid uh, auxiliary police officers. They don't get paid for the service to this community. And I want to thank the chief of uh, the auxiliary, uh, former city councilman and uh, good friend to this community, uh, Chief Leonard Jordan, uh, Jordan and his able-bodied captain, Chris Constantino, and the rest of his staff. But uh, on behalf of the city, gentlemen, we appreciate you giving us the time and your families are here in the chamber. We thank you. Everett is on the move with the casino and so forth, so you're going to be quite busy in the future. And we thank you for your service to this city. Thank you. We take a five minute recess so there can be some more photos taken. You want to do them in here with us? Tell them to come up. Hey, have them all up there. No, it's not going to fit all up there. Oh, have them stand right there. <laughs> Where do you want them?
This meeting will now reconvene. Council Napolitano. Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to rise on a point of personal privilege. Uh, you know, I'm very impressed with the number of, of, of volunteers we're here swearing in tonight for their auxiliary police. Uh, I spent 12 years in the Everett Auxiliary Police under, under, in uniform and under badge. Uh, when I got out of the Navy in 86, it was, seemed the ideal place to bring those skills. And we had roughly around the same number of people that were very actively involved. I'm very encouraged following the history of the Everett Auxiliary Police as it's dwindled and now seems to be booming again. Uh, I've got great hope for the, for the organization and how they can continue to support our regular police and our citizens. So I just wanted to make a point that uh, very impressed with the number of people that are stepping up and wanting to volunteer and, pick up and take a hand in protecting our city. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor. Next item, Mr. Clark, number four, I believe. <clears throat> item number four is an order sponsored by Councilor Anthony DiPero's president to accept donations totaling $4,400 to the City of Everett's celebration account. Second or motion? Motion made and seconded for favorable action. Please call the roll and a letter of thanks be sent. Councilor Capone? Yes. Councilor Della Sola? Yes. Councilor DeFlorio? Yes. Councilor Hammer? Yes. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McKinnon? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Napolitano? Yes. Councilor Sani? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. Councilor DePiro? Yes. Yeah, can you read those off, Mr. Clerk? The order has passed. I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, Kelly and Ryan, $500. That's, that's a, a, a company. Yeah, it's not like just some guy, Kelly, and his, <laughs> his buddy, Ryan. Uh, East Boston Neighborhood Health, $200. Wheeler Breda, $3,000. Senior Hole Health, $200. And Now Business Intelligence, $500. Next that was item. 11 yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. Order has passed. And before the next item is read, um, this was discussed during the budget hearing, so it's my opinion that it is a routine matter. Item number five, Mr. Clerk. Item number five, order sponsored by Council Anthony DePiro's president. That ten million seven hundred fifty-four thousand two hundred fifty by borrowing amounts listed as requested in CIP budget. Favorable action on the order. Second. Suspend rule thirteen. Motion made and seconded to suspend rule thirteen. And actually, it's been a committee, so I don't think you have to. Suspend. Okay, so we're we're good. Mm -hmm. On the motion, Council Napolitano. Just for the for the public, uh, is it possible to read a list of what a council's money is being transferred for? Or is it? <laughs> yes. It is. Tw to, uh, 2018 Capital Improvement Program, uh, 9,509,000. 2018 Water Sewer Enterprise Fund, CIP, 1,245,250. Thank you. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Council Capone. <coughs> yes. Council Del Sola. Yes. Council Florio. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Palatano. Yes. Council Sani. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. Council DePiero. Yes. Eleven yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. The order has passed. Item number six is an order sponsored by Council Anthony DePiero's president transfer out seventeen hundred and fifty dollars from E nine one one's holiday account to E nine one one telecommunications account. Cover costs for the end of our fiscal year. Uh, I don't, do we have to suspend yes. Rule 13 because it's an inter department yeah. transfer? It has been to committee, though, right? This yeah. Is, it was All right. Motion made and seconded for favorable action. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Council Capone? Yes. Council Del Sola? Yes. Council DeFlorio? Yes. Council Hanley? Yes. Council Matuski? Yes. Council McKinnon? Yes. Council McLaughlin? Yes. Council Napolitano? Yes. Council Sani? Yes. Council Simonelli? Yes. Council DePiro? Yes. 11 yeas, zero nays, Mr. President. Order has passed. Next item. Item number seven is an order sponsored by Council Anthony DePiro's president transfer $1,000 from purchasing department's expenditure accounts into purchasing department's salary account to cover a clerical upgrade step increase. Favorable action on the motion. Motion made and seconded for favorable action. Please call the roll. Council Capone. Yes. Council Della Sola. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. 
Council McKinnon? Yes. Council McLaughlin? Yes. Council Napolitano? Yes. Council Sani? Yes. Council Simonelli? Yes. Council DePiro? Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. Order has passed. <clears throat> Item number 8 is an order sponsored by Council Anthony DePiro's President to transfer 85000 from ISD salary account to ISD Electricity Streetlights account. Motion made and seconded for favorable action. Uh, I believe gentlemen, it's I hereby submit for your consideration in order to transfer 85000 from the inspectional service to salary account to the ISD electricity streetlights account. As you know, electricity rates were increased during this fiscal year, and this will allow us to end the year with sufficient funds in our electricity account. I recommend favorable act, uh, pass of this order, respectfully submitted. Colleague Maria Jr. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Councilor McLaughlin. Mr. President, on the motion, I had just one question. In the $85,000, is that a, a position that was unfilled, or is that money that they generate throughout the year that made them have the uh, additional funds in their department? How did they come to having, let's say, $85,000 free cash, if you will, at the end of the year? Do you, do you uh, know? It does say salary account, so I'm assuming Judging. it's from a position, not from revenue. I, I could be wrong. No, from salary, the judge, uh, it's, if I may, uh, speaking as a, a sure. department head, as, as people leave, uh, 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 people come in, things like that, or you're, you're advertising, you know you're going to add the position, but it takes a while to hire someone, that kind of money adds up in, in, in the course of a year, and I believe that's where the money, yes, that's how the money is generated. Okay. Yeah, if somebody leaves, it's not filled for like three months or so, sure, and gap. that happens a few right times, on. and that's how that money is. Thank you, Ms. Monterey, right. for your clarification. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Council Capone. Yes. Council Del Sola. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council Hanley. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinney. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Sani. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. Item has passed. N item number 9. Item number 9 is an order sponsored by Council Anthony DePiro's President to transfer $51,750 from budgetary fund balance into the following accounts, 11750 into E911 overtime account and $40,000 into the Medicare account. Motion made and seconded for favorable action. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Council Capone. Yes. Council Del Sola. Yes. Council DeFlorio. Yes. Council Hanlon. Yes. Council Matuski. Yes. Council McKinnon. Yes. Council McLaughlin. Yes. Council Napolitano. Yes. Council Sani. Yes. Council Simonelli. Yes. Council DePiro. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. Has passed. Next item is number item number 14. Item number 14 is a communication from the Retirement Board. Notice of retirement from Michael Adorazzo, City Clerk. His last date of employment will be June 28, 2017. Reluctantly. If, if, I, if I may, Ms. <laughs> Was there a second on the motion? One, one second, counselors. Uh, motion made and seconded on the second. motion. Councilor McLaughlin was first. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, as my colleagues just quoted, but do we have, what happens if we vote no on this, <laughs> on this <laughs> communication tonight? Do we, do we get to keep Mr. Matarazzo? I'm um, afraid he's going no matter what. We, yeah. We've all taken many votes in these chambers and votes that we've been proud of and votes that we've reluctantly taken at times. And this is one of those ones tonight for me that I reluctantly will be taking. Uh, to see Mr. Matarazzo retire is a great accomplishment for him and his family and his life, but it's a huge uh, negative for our community. He has done a lot of good for our city, uh, both as an elected official here in these chambers and as coming back as an employee in the city. Um, tonight I will be voting favorably to accept this, but truly uh, remorseful for having to do so and wish him the best of luck in his retirement and know that our doors will always be open as our, as our friend. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I echo those sentiments. I had the great honor of serving with, uh, with uh, Mike on the Common Council in the Ward 6 delegation many years ago. And uh, again, another honor to serve in this chamber with him clerking our meetings. Uh, he will leave huge shoes to fill. And uh, you know, we, we wish him well on his future endeavors, but we, uh, we are sad to see him go. Thank you. Appreciate it. Councillor Della Sola. Just want to quickly echo the words of my colleagues. Uh, we talked about the other day about <clears throat> certain people have impact on the city. And I think Mac was just a piece of the foundation that made Everett what it is today. So many people came through these chambers did stuff in the city, but hate to see him leave, but I'm sure he's not going to be far. We'll see him a lot. Might see him more than we see him now. <laughs> but thank you. I know I will. Uh, Council <laughs> Napolitano. Yeah. 
Uh, I must say, first of all, I've known uh, uh, Mr. Matarazzo since high school. And I got to say, I've always been impressed by his involvement in, in the city, right out of the high school, and in getting involved in politics. I got into politics later in life, but I must honestly say, knowing Mike all those years and watching his, was actually an inspiration for me that got me over the edge. So if you want to blame anybody for my involvement, blame him. <laughs> <laughs> Best of luck and congratulations. You deserve it. Councilor DeFlorio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wish Michael a lot of luck, and we go back before high school because his nickname is uh -oh. Marty. <laughs> so <laughs> I do wish him a lot of luck, and we will, and we will miss him. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor McKinnon. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to the city clerk. It's going to be uh, sad to see you go, sir. And uh, you've been a great clerk. Been a mentor at times to people in this uh, the chamber. Uh, you've taught everyone well, and uh, your opinion was always somewhat gracious at times, and then somewhat not gracious at times. <laughs> but uh, it was always it was always accepted, and uh, you know we're going to miss that. So hopefully we can find someone to fill your shoes, and I think we will. But uh, I wanted to say. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your service. Thank you for your history of Everett. And uh, hopefully we can uh, continue having that around us so that we may learn some more from that, Mr. Clerk. Uh, and good luck in your retirement. I, I, I feel sad because you had asked me, how does it feel to retire? And I said, pretty good. Where are you going to go? <laughs> so there you go. Good luck. Thank you. Councilor Hanlon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want you all to know that um, every day I ask Mike if he's, if he's sure he wants to do this. And uh, when he says yes, I try to talk him out of it, as he'll tell you. Um, he has, uh, he's, you know, he, was, he was my assistant clerk when I was a clerk. And uh, since then, he has brought so much more to the office. You know, times have changed, the laws have changed and so forth. He's stayed right up on top of them and everything. And uh, the biggest thing that I like about Michael is that he's, he's really into the history of the city of Everett. And um, someday, if and when we ever have a museum, I hope to see Marty's Corner will be in that museum for the things that he has collected. And he has paid for out of his own pocket, by the way. And he's also now redonated to the city of Everett. Uh, so he's, he's done a lot for the city of Everett, and we congratulate him for that, you know. Uh, and I just want to let him know that I've got, still got 18 days to talk him out of it, and I still be trying to do that. So, Michael, good luck with me. <laughs> All right. Councilor Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. I, too, would like to say a few nice words about our city clerk. He's a wonderful person. He's got a great sense of humor. Uh, I got to meet him in 1979 when I originally ran. John Burley, myself, him, and uh, a very dear friend of mine passed away, and I, I filled the vacancy. And uh, in 1981, I called him in May. I said, Mike, you know, I'd like to fill my uncle's spot and so forth. And he said, Wayne, I'm with you 100%. And here we are today. I got to tell you, he's a decent man. He's honest. He's, he's Everett's historian. And I really like him. I really never, you know, we, we have had our moments up here. But I got to tell you, he is a gentleman. And, uh, you know, he's got the knowledge. He worked for Governor Weld for many years. He's got a great sense. I mean, he was the joke writer for Governor Weld, if you can believe that. And uh, he's just a wonderful guy. He's a good family man. He's what, I mean, I appreciate him. And I probably never told him this, but I do like him. And uh, I want to wish him enjoy. He had a little uh, incident with the election last year, I think it was, or the year before, where he, his health conditions were a little concerned. So, you know, you got to stop and smell the roses at some point. And... Uh, you know, being in Everett politics is a full court press here. It's not an easy task to stick around this long. But for a guy like him, you can see why. He's, he's just a gentleman, and I want to wish you luck. Thank you. Thank you Councilor Simonelli. Uh, um, just wanted to say thank you, Mike, um, for being a friend all the way back at Baldwin Ave Park to your uh, knowledge and competency here at City Clerk. Um, a lot of memories, and best of luck in your retirement. Councilor Sani. I would like to say also, um, I wish you all the best 
and thank you for the last 10 years I have served and been here for me. And I'd like to stand and welcome. Say thank you. Before we vote on the motion, I just want to thank uh, Clerk Matarazzo, me being a, a first-termer, everything that you've taught me and being there when I needed advice and being here next to me, I appreciate it. And whoever does take the place has big <laughs> shoes to fill. So thank you, Mr. Clerk. All those in favor of accepting the communication? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Item number 15, a resolution sponsored by Councilor John Leo McKinnon. Uh, committee report, I'm sorry, a resolution regarding the increased police patrols at the Walgreen and Glenda Square package store with a recommendation to refer the subject matter back. Accept this committee report and Good. place on file. Second motion. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the committee report and place <coughs> on file. All those in favor? Refer back to sponsor. And refer back to sponsor. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Uh, Chairman, can we take six. items 16, 18, and 19 collectively 16, and refer 18. back to sponsor? If we could just keep 19 out, I just wanted to make a comment. Okay. 16 and 19? 16 and 18. 16 and 18, I apologize. Yeah. Uh, is there a second? Second. Item number 16 is a resolution sponsored by uh, Council John Lee McKinney to discuss predatory actions of companies, shop advisors, prey on owners on site while they are watching their homes burn with a recommendation to refer back to sponsor. Uh, 18 is a resolution sponsored by Council Michael J. McLaughlin regarding public safety and wind project with a recommendation to refer back to sponsor. Accept the committee report, place on file. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the committee reports, place on file, and refer them back to respective sponsors. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. 17. Yes. Item number 17, the resolution is a committee government operations committee report on a resolution sponsored by Councilor Michael J. McLaughlin to invite police traffic to discuss traffic flow with Sweetser in Santilli Circle uh, to transfer the time in Camilling to the month of October. Accept the committee report, place on file. Motion invite and, uh, and invite yeah, all, all guests. Yeah. Motion made and seconded to accept the committee report, place on file. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Item number 20 uh, is 19. A, oh, I'm sorry, 19 resolution sponsored by Council Fred Capone. Government uh, operations report regarding construction progress of Farm Street Park. The recommendation refer back to sponsor. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be very brief on it uh, for the benefit of my colleagues who weren't able to attend the meeting and for those at home. Uh, the contractor was up at the meeting and stated that uh, the, the soft portion of the park, the non-water portion of it, would be open by the end of this week and the uh, intent in belief is that by the end of June, the entire park will be available to the public. Yeah. So, yeah, well, that we're going for this year. So with that, I just wanted to update the body. I, I move that we accept the communication, place and file, refer back to spots. Is there a second on the motion? Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the committee report, place in file, and refer back to sponsor. All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Opposed, the ayes have it. Item number 20 is a Government Operations Committee report regarding screening municipal candidates for proper residency with a recommendation to place on file. Accept the committee report, place on file. Second motion. Motion made and seconded to accept the committee report, place on file. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Item number 21 is a committee report on a resolution sponsored by Council McKinnon, Council DePiro, to establish a task force on public safety to purpose of gathering and sharing information with all agencies involved. Accept the committee report, place on file. Refer back to sponsor. Motion made and seconded to accept the committee report, place on file, and refer back to sponsors. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Item number 22 is our committee report on resolution sponsored by Councilor Stephen Spinelli to consider putting on memorial benches up and down Broadway to honor past veterans, city officials, police, and fire department with a recommendation referred to the city clerk and the mayor's office. Accept the committee report, place on file, and uh, refer out. Motion made and seconded to accept the committee report, place on file, and refer to the clerk's in mayor's office on the motion council simonelli um yeah with uh, we'd like to just make sure that we report back at our meeting in july um, and also a request yeah. for a report back at our first or second meeting of july all oh, the meeting of july okay all those in favor aye opposed the ayes have it 
Item number 23, Committee on Legislative Affairs and Elections. Report of an ordinance sponsored by Con John F. Handler, as president, regarding the regulations of taxi cabs in the city of Everett. The recommendation for favorable action, I believe. Set the communication placed on file and motion for favorable action. Second. Motion, motion made and seconded to accept the committee report, place in file, and take favorable action. <coughs> uh, would that require a roll, Mr. Clerk? Yes. Mm -hmm. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Del Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Matuski. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Sani. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor DePiero. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. Has passed. You have enrolled. Yeah. Enrolled. Mm. Item number 24 is a legislative affairs report on ordinance amending section 1-8. General penalty. And it's a recommendation to report back to the City Council with a recommendation for favorable action with the proposed amendment to preamble to be provided by the Assistant City Clerk. Chairman, oh, go ahead. Nope. Councilor Hamlin. Chairman, just make a motion we uh, accept the ordinance, I mean, accept the committee report and uh, for fa and also to uh, uh, move for favorable action that the ordinance should pass. As amended? <laughs> As amended. Councilor Capone. Uh, if I may, thank you, Mr. President. I apologize to, to the members. I, I have not had a chance to see uh, the ordinance as amended with any input from the committee. So I would ask the indulgence to lay this on the table to our next meeting. Freddie has it now. Yeah. I withdraw the first motion, Mr. Chairman. Motion was made and seconded yeah. to lay on the table for our next meeting. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have. And number 25 is a, uh, also a Legislative Affairs Committee report uh, on a resolution signed by Councilor Stephen Spinelli to help open up more parking space on our street by revisiting Section 18-150.1 Visit a Placard Ordinance. With, what did the committee report first? Councilor Simonelli. The recommendation to report back to the City Council a recommendation to refer the Traffic, Parking, and Safety Commission with a request that they invite Councilor Simonelli and a representative of the Collector's Office to discuss this matter at their next meeting. All right. Is there a motion, Councilors? That's a motion. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Right. Committee on Ways and Means of <coughs> Committee Reports. An order sponsored by Councilor Anthony Curtis, President, order transferring $586,000 in budgetary fund balance into various city fixed cost accounts with a recommendation for favorable action. Favorable action, Your Honor. Second. second. Motion made and seconded for favorable order. Action on the order. I apologize. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Del Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Councilor Hanlon? Yes. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McKinnon? Yes. Councilor Mc McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Napolitano? Yes. Councilor Sani? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. Councilor DePiero? Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. Order Mr. has President, passed. Could we please take 27, 28 collectively to give all the transfers and table recommendations on the audits? Motion made and seconded Second. to take items number 27 and 28 collectively. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. <laughs> Item number 27 is an order sponsored by Councilor Anthony DePiero. As president, order transferring $100,000 from the assessor's overlay surplus, surplus account to assess his professional services account. 28 is transferring $125,000 from budgetary fund balance into the urban renewal account. Both matters with favorable recommendations from the Committee on Ways and Means. Favorable action on the audits. Is there a second? Motion made and seconded for favorable action on the orders. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Councilor Capone? Yes. Councilor Della Sola? Yes. Councilor DeFlorio? Yes. Councilor Hanley? Yes. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McKinnon? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Napolitano? Yes. Councilor Sani? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. Councilor DePiro? Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. Orders have passed. Next item. Number 30. Item number 29 is the Committee on the Whole of the Budget for 2018 with a recommendation for favorable action. Uh, I'm sorry, Committee of the Whole of Fiscal Year 28 by budget report with a recommendation for favorable action the FY18 budget as submitted by the mayor in the sum of $183,310,997. Is 
uh, recommendation on the FY18 water and sewer as submitted by the mayor of 18127320 and a favorable recommendation on the CIP as submitted by the mayor in the sum of 11,447,500. Motion was made and seconded for favorable action. I just want to congratulate Councillor Peter Napolitano. He did a great job on the budget hearings. Please call the roll, Mr. Clark. <clears throat> Councillor Capone. Yes. Councillor Delasola. Yes. Councillor DeFlorio. Yes. Councillor Hanley. Yes. Councillor Matuski. Yes. Councillor McKinnon. Yes. Councillor McLaughlin. Yes. Councillor Paltano. Yes. Councillor Sani. Yes. Councillor Simonelli. Yes. Councillor DePiro. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, Mr. President. The budget has passed as proposed. Item number 30, under unfinished business, Mr. President, is a, a order sponsored by Councilor Anthony DePiro as president, an order accepting the City of Everett's other post employment benefits OPEB trust. Councilor McKinnon? I believe it will be the Chief of Staff probably to come up and uh, answer that. Or the Auditor? The auditor. Either I believe one. it would be the correct person. Is there a motion to invite the Auditor? Well, I didn't see him. Sorry. <laughs> motion made and seconded to invite our Auditor, Mr. Demas. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Councilor McKinnon. Thank you through you, Mr. Chairman, um, to the Auditor. Uh, Mr. Demas, on this, could you just explain what this is going to do once again? I know that you've done this in length before, but um, there was like three, there was two that we passed and this one was held over. So I just wanted to know what this is uh, in regards to again. Would sure. Uh, thank you, Eric Demas, CFO. Uh, the, uh, the short version is that there was a change this year with the Municipal Modernization Act, um, which had an impact on numerous um, financial laws um, and this was one of them that new law required us to actually adopt this new language based upon the city's original intent of setting aside an OPEB stabilization trust what this document does is it ensures that everything that we're doing related to a trust is compliant with mass general law now with the trust when we put this these funds into the trust uh, the, it, there would be trustees that oversee this now there would be and we would have no we, we would have to utilize what they're giving us for communication back to, to utilize these funds is that what's correct of it? that would be the it. case and one of the trustees would be um, as defined in the trust document the president of the city council okay so there would be one member from this board there would the be trust. okay and the other members would be made up of uh, it would be the mayor, the CFO, the human resources director, the city council president, and then um, it also names the mayor's chief of staff as an ex officio member. Okay. Now, th this trust, what are these funds, how much of these funds would be going in and how much would be utilized and what are they going to be utilized for the the three documents that I presented um, to the board um, at the at the original meeting when we started the discussion the first two documents this is just a refresher this is not. this is just a refresher the yeah. first two documents are a general citywide investment policy as prescribed underneath the these new statutes the second was a specific OPEB trust um, investment policy both of those policies and documents the city uh, the city council has um, passed with favorable action this document is merely the trust document um, that creates what the city council's intent was when the city uh, council set aside funds for stabilization what I am recommending um, as part of this is to have the city adopt um, um, and, and pass with favorable action this trust document however not to place all of the existing funds that are related to the OPEB trust fund uh, the OPEB stabilization fund sure. um, until probably two to three years and when the city's in a little bit different financial um, um, situation the reason being where those funds are sitting right now is they act in effect as an available surplus funds should the city need to or, or have a desire to use those funds 
um, to fund um, various appropriations. Once monies are placed into this trust, this trust is an irrevocable trust and this money cannot be touched. You cannot touch it. So as such, right now, um, there, there's a little over $4 million sitting in the OPEB stabilization trust account. I'm not recommending transferring all of those funds into this newly created trust. Um, baby steps, let's take it slow. Mm -hmm. um, and I would recommend putting in a far uh, much smaller amount um, should City Council vote to um, create this trust. And what amount would that be? Uh, around a couple hundred thousand dollars, I think $250,000 um, would be a start. It would allow, allow us to, um, as trustees, collectively get together and meet, um, meet with some financial advisors, um, see what they have to offer, um, and then at that point we can then um, see how that fits in with the newly created OPEB trust investment policy. Um, so my recommendation would be to move forward, uh, but to move forward slowly and cautiously. So that would, that's your professional opinion, correct? It is. Okay. And um, we, this board would lose control of those funds once they're put into that trust, right? Well, could you define lose control? Um, well, the trust, I mean, it would still be a trust um, as administered by the city. Sure. It is still city funds. Okay. Um, however, it, it is an irrevocable trust, so those funds can only be used, trust, regardless right? of city council, but specifically for the purpose of the OPEB liability. Okay. And that, that would be just for that one purpose? That one purpose alone. Okay. And the trustees would control that, correct? The trustees would manage the trust. Manage it's it. not necessarily there is control as it's all prescribed by statute. Sure. Thank you very much. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Through you to uh, Mr. Demas. Is this the, um, the trust that we were talking about way back when your recommendation was not to, not to have it, and then we had a discussion that said perhaps have it but minimally fund it? That it was. It was, it was a compromise. Originally, I didn't want to put all of the funds. Right. I didn't think it was wise or pr financially prudent for the city to put all these funds into this trust. And, and reason being is, I just want to make sure that I, I have it straight. I think it impacts our financial flexibility. It might even impact our bond rating because now money that might be available is now locked up and you can't touch. Precisely. So I, I agree with you about the, um, the minimal funding going forward. And you probably should keep that in mind as we're, as we're appropriating the funds, because even though it goes into a trust, it's still this body that would be making the recommendation to, or making the vote, to transfer funds. And we probably should tread lightly for that for, for quite a bit of time, I think. Would, would that be accurate? It is, I concur. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Thank you, Mr. Right. Chairman. Is this something that has to be done? It, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be done. Um, the reason why I put it um, before the mayor um, and recommended to the mayor to bring this forward to council was that the city recognized the OPEB liability as all municipalities were required to do. As such, within city charter through the ordinances or other mechanisms, the city has been setting aside funds specifically related to this liability. So as such, I thought it was prudent to allow uh, or actually to share the changes underneath the Municipal Modernization Act with the mayor and make recommendations. If this is what the city's intent was based upon changes in the, this, this new law, then this is an avenue um, and a recommendation from financial advisors as to the next uh, prudent course of action. Okay, so the other fund, the $4 million, we're not gonna transfer it to this. We don't have to transfer it to this account. Is that correct? That is correct. Do, do we have to fund both accounts now or just this one? The $4 million we're just gonna put aside? The, as of right now, the $4 million is sitting aside uh -huh. in the OPEB stabilization account um, as prescribed by charter. After free cash is certified, there's a certain percentage of free cash that's transferred into general stabilization, capital stabilization, and the OPEB trust stabilization. Um, that mechanism is not going to change. That, that would be an automatic. Once DOR certifies free cash, then it, it's just a mechanism for us to go through, put the orders together, and put them before council. That mechanism will not change. Monies that are within those stabilization accounts, city council um, and the mayor still have full control over those. Nothing changes. The only thing that would change here is that 
because we have that liability and because city council took action to create a trust, then we're either going to create this trust in conformance with Mass General Law and then City Council and the Mayor have the ability to make the determination as to how much funds go in and when those funds go in. So the Mayor is the only one that will make that determination? We would not? Well, it would be an appropriation and as such the appropriation so would come from the Mayor's office of which City Council would then take action. Right. So we, we, no matter what you do, we still have to take action on it. So in other words, yes. the Mayor would come to us just like he comes for any other appropriations and we would have to vote to put it into the fund. That is correct. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood that clearly. Thank you. Motion made and second to excuse our auditor. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Demas. Motion was made and seconded to accept the policy. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Del Sol. Yes. Councilor Gloria. Yes. Councilor Yes. Councilor Matusti. Yes. Councilor McKinney. Yes. 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 The order has passed. Item number 31 is next. Item number 31, resolution sponsored by Councilor Richard Dallasola Jr. and Councilor Michael McLaughlin to invite Facility Management Maintenance Director George Lane up to next meeting to report on renovations of the bathrooms at the rec center. Now we did receive a communication from Mr. Lane, so before the sponsors speak, I'm going to ask our clerk to read that. I have it right here. Oh, cool. uh, the City Council, we invited to appear before the Council to speak on behalf of the restrooms at the Everett Recreational Center. We are currently placing the floor system that the City recently received an insurance payment to replace. The payment prorated the existing floor for age and use. During the work in-house, we were able to complete the work for close to the amount that was given to us from the insurer. As a building inspector, I remember Rich O'Donnell had a proposal in the form of a set of plans to complete repairs to this facility. The plan in the pr proposal was dismissed based on a notion that the building was not going to be there in six months. As a temporary plan, the bathrooms were then painted and a fluff and buff was executed. <laughs> we recently... <laughs> we recently had a member of, it means something different. We really had a member of the Massachusetts Early Education enter the building. He was taken back with condition of the bathrooms. I would propose the money to repair these bathrooms as authorized and we continue with repairs of this center. We had a quote from a private company to complete these repairs. The proposal cost $125,000. The facility team has taken this project on as an in-house project. The current Breakdown reads as follows, flooring system $47,000, Bobcat rental $625, dumpsters $3,250, concrete $6,200, Home Depot miscellaneous $1,000, <coughs> concrete buggies $450, power screed $2,500, for total to date $61,025. This is over $60,000 savings to the city. Thank you for that, Mr. Clerk, and for the laugh, Councillor Delasola. Uh, I went down the other day to look at the rec center. I mean, they're doing a great job, but my question is, I don't think it was the answer there. Unless they're trying to tell me it's 125,000 to redo the bathrooms, is that what they're saying? Yes. That's the, the entire the cost. To get these bathrooms is authorized. Oh. That's the entire cost of the renovation, I believe. Uh, the, could I have somebody? Right. Can I have the Chief of Staff come up and just explain this to us? Is there a second? Lay it on the table. Lay it on the table. Do you want to lay it over and have uh, lay the table for up? next meeting? Okay. The Motion made and seconded to invite the this Chief of Staff item. to come up and, and George Lane to come up also. Have our Chief of Staff and Mr. Lane come up. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, Mr. Chairman, could please take items 32 through 34 collectively? Motion made and seconded to suspend the rules and take items number 32, 33, and 34 collectively. All those in favor? Aye. Council Napolitano. I just have a question, uh, trying to understand the distinction between item 29 and 32, 33, and 34. Could someone clear that question up as to why? I think 29 was the committee report. That's all. Whereas okay. So this is the actual call, approval. These are the actual approval. Okay, yeah. that's, that's what I suspected. Thank you. Item number 32 is the annual appropriation bill in the sum of $183,310,997. 
favorable action? Uh, item number uh, 33 is the water and sewer enterprise at $18,127,320. And item number 34 is the CIP capital improvement plan budget at $11,447,500. Was there a second on second. council? Motion was made and seconded for favorable action on the three. Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just briefly, I, Councilor DeFlorio congratulated uh, Councilor Napolitano earlier, but I also want to congratulate Mr. Demas. He really worked hard on putting a professional budget before us, a budget that made a lot of sense, one that I truly was pleased to see. I, I really spent a lot of time trying to find some places where we could cut, to be honest, and there was not anywhere in that budget that you could really cut to uh, that wouldn't impact something significantly. The administration and Mr. Demas did a really good job this year at presenting a, a true budget that made sense for the f function of our community. And I'm more than pleased to vote favorable tonight on all of these motions. But congratulations, Mr. Demas. You worked very hard this year on this budget. And great job on, on another year, successful year. Thank you. On the motion, please call the roll. Mr. Councilor Capone. Yes. Councilor Della Sola. Yes. Councilor DeFlorio. Yes. Councilor Hanlon. Yes. Councilor Matuska. Yes. Councilor McKinnon. Yes. Councilor McLaughlin. Yes. Councilor Napolitano. Yes. Councilor Sani. Yes. Councilor Simonelli. Yes. Councilor DePiro. Yes. 11 yeas, 0 nays, President. I said it prematurely earlier, but now the budget has passed as proposed. <laughs> Item 35 is resolution sponsored by Councilor Wayne Amatuski, Massport Representative, Community Advisor, Board Member, Mr. Sousa, here next meeting, June 26, to explain constant loud, low flying airplane harassment over the last month and a half at the request of concerned citizens. Councilor Matuski. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, over the last six or seven weeks, Everett has been uh, really impacted with the increased noise levels from planes. And I know some members it doesn't affect their neighborhood, but it affects, I got news for you. Over the last week I've received calls from uh, all parts of Everett, Hancock Street, Sherman Street, Tufts Ave, School Street, every street down the village, Oak Street, Swan Street, and of course Wood, one where I live. This has been going on a little too long. As I picked up the Herald today, and I just want to read the headline, if that's okay with you, Mr. President. Go ahead, Counselor. Uproar in Eastie. Air splitting noise. Shakes houses, rattles neighbors after flight plan adjustment. <coughs> well, East Boston is where Logan Airport is. These people uh, are kind of used to it, but it's really over the top. What Massport has done is unbelievable. Uh, the injustice to this community with no notification at all. There was never any habitat. We have three papers in this city. There was nothing in e any of them that I can recall. Now, according to the Globe article a couple of weeks ago, June 23rd will be the cutoff date. I have a date where the, there's a runway being repaved over there. Okay, so. I happened to call uh, just the other day. Well, I call every day, actually, uh, because my, I just, my neighbors, uh, the more I call, the better I feel, to be honest with you. You can sit home and do nothing, or you can call 617-561-3333, which a lot of people, I even did a, a neighborhood alert notice in one of the papers, and I plan on doing the other two. But it's over the top now. This is impacting people's quality of life, okay? We've had a lousy year of weather up until this point. People want to sit in their yard and enjoy their property with their families. I didn't buy into this. I had a woman call me uh, on Bailey Street, just bought a condo, a converted three family just the other day. And uh, she was sitting in the back yard with her husband, who was a disabled veteran. And she left him alone for a few minutes and came back out and he was crying. And she asked him, you know, what's going on? And he said, the planes are just unbelievable. This person has spent 350 grand. She goes, Wayne, if I had known this, I would have never purchased this condominium. I loved the neighborhood, everything was fine up until seven or eight weeks ago. 
Now, I'm not going to beat a dead horse here, but I want somebody from Massport and not some public relations con artist to come up here and tell us that uh, it's the wind condition, okay? That's baloney. Massport has been lying to cities and towns near the airport for many years. It's no, no secret. I was on the Citizens Advisory Council representing this city for four years under Mayor Raguchi. I know how it all works. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. There's a whole new group up there now. It doesn't impact their city or town. And there's 32 members that are right around there. And they just could care less about. When I was on there, you had fighters from Revere, East Boston, Chelsea, Malden, Medford. Medford is suing Massport right now. Now, I had a brief discussion with the mayor this evening. He's kind of concerned about this whole affair. After June 29th, I was talking to a woman on Lewis Street, the first half of Lewis Street, too, <laughs> just a couple of days ago. She called the complaint line, Mr. President, and she was told it's going to take two years to do this completion here. Now, when I heard that, I almost fell over. You know, I'm a reasonable person. My neighbors are reasonable people. And it's affecting people's health. It's unfair. And I'm sick and tired of it, you know? It, it really is over the top. And all oh, the weather conditions. As a matter of fact, I got a report in the mail today. Where is it here? They have a new system now. Now, to get a load of this. To give you the date you recall, and by the way, anybody that calls there should ask for a copy of their complaint, because it goes to the FAA. If you don't get a copy, it doesn't go there. They may record that you call, but that's about it. Then they send this thing here. You need a magnifying glass to even know what this thing is. I have no clue what this is. What's it say here? Logan Internet Runway Use Monthly. You can't even read this thing. These guys are such con artists. And believe me, you know, you get insensitive when you're working on a complaint line. I know how it works. Oh, it's the wind, it's the southeasterly wind. And give me a break. The weather changes every day. Here's, here's a good line for you. Massport works closely with the FAA to ensure the air traffic is dispersed throughout the communities surrounding Logan Airport when possible. That is, is that it is shown in the included 2071 usage report. Well, I got news for you. How the hell do you disperse to other communities when we're getting hit so hard? Four planes a minute. Now, I'm not exaggerating. Four planes a minute is over the top. And, you know, as I said, this in health concerns, what comes out of these planes? So I want somebody from Massport, not a public relations uh, expert up here, to tell us when it's going to be completed. Now, I just want to ask you, Mr. President, um, to the city clerk, uh, the last time we uh, had this on the agenda two weeks, did you send a copy of? Uh, yes, and, uh, yes, and I believe uh, Mr. Sousa uh, composed a letter and sent it to Okay. Well, I want commun I want a copy of those okay. and so forth. But I want a, a certified letter to Massport, the executive director. Now I knew Governor King, who got his political start being the director over there, because he was a kind and decent guy, and he protected the neighborhoods around the airport, and that's how he be became governor. But this is over the top. This is really ridiculous. You don't think the Herald's gonna make it in their headlines? Okay? If it's not an issue. And there's other communities getting involved, and I don't want ever to be left behind. I want us to be on record that we are unhappy. And I'm so glad I had the chance to talk to the mayor tonight, because he is getting fed up with the whole scene, too. All you got to do is ride around various neighborhoods, and it's a, it's a nightmare. And, you know, my phone's ringing quite a bit on this issue, and I just want to get to the bottom of it. When is it going to stop? We do have a few other counselors that want to comment. Well, I'm, I'm okay. completed what I have to say. And I want to thank you for the uh, levity here, Mr. President.
Your I take this area, uh, issue very seriously. Not only are they flying low, I believe that the, it's a safety factor. They're coming too close together, one after another. And we have LNG tanks here, and it goes on and on. But I think we're going to have a public safety issue at some point here. Thank you, Mr. President. You're welcome. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, I, too, want to echo the sentiments. Uh, I was also told that uh, the runway is closed for repairs, and that's why there's been more flights coming over Everett and that Patton. Uh, also told that it's supposed to end in June. Um, but uh, it's been clearly more than excessive. Uh, and prior to the runway being closed down, it's been excessive. It affects all parts of our community. It especially impacts Ward 1. And it goes right over my house as well. So I'm very well aware of what's happening. Uh, after the runway is completed, if, if this is going to continue to be the flight pattern, uh, we've been saying it for a while up here now, we are clearly impacted as a community. And Massport has got to take notice of that. They need to start uh, providing the soundproof windows and other accommodations that impact the communities receive. So hopefully, end of June, this is going to run its course. But I think we're going to have to keep the uh, pedal to the metal on this one as well. And we're going to have to get the accommodations for this community if the flight pattern is going to continue. So, Thank you, Mr. President. Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I do also want to echo the comments of my colleagues. Um, at first, I really thought this was, was kind of a joke. I thought the, this was just kind of an issue that was here and there. It wasn't a major issue. And most recently, in the last few weeks, I can't tell you the number of residents from Ward 6 who have directly called me, sent me a private message on Facebook, all hours of the day and night, asked me, what, what's going on? How do we resolve this? I can't sleep. I can't concentrate. I can't live my life because of this. Um, it has most recently became a really serious issue um, it, for the residents of Ward 6. Several of the residents on Oak Street have, have reached out to me several times about this. Um, anywhere you go in the city, you know, you're just starting to notice them more frequently, I think, than in the past. Uh, but all of us have commented to one another when we've been to a city event or been out anywhere in the city about these planes. I, I know you and I have spoken about it, Mr. President. Uh, Councilor Del Sol and I have spoken about it. Uh, it's really becoming a serious issue, and I think Councilor Matuski is, is dead on with this issue. I think he has done something really good to bring this to the forefront and to bring attention to it because it is starting to really impact our community and quality of life. And at the beginning, like I said, I wasn't taking it as serious as I am now. This is an issue that needs to be resolved. It needs to be resolved today. It can't continue. And if it continues, we need to take serious action here on the City Council to protect the residents of Everett. This is, cannot continue. This needs to end. So if it's beyond the end of June and this is still happening, we're going to need to do something. And I know the mayor is on board. I've spoken to him as well. He takes it serious. I know he hears the same complaints that we all hear. Uh, we're going to work on this as a collaborative group if this doesn't end by the end of June. But I want to thank Councilor Matuski for all the good work that he has done on this issue and bringing it to the forefront because it has become a serious health concern for our community as a whole. Thank you. Councilor Delosola. Uh, a comment and a question. I'll do the question first. Uh, maybe Council Matuski can answer this question. Has Massport ever come up here all this time you've been fighting this battle? If you might be. If Council wants to answer this question. I, I don't believe they have. Oh, they, no, they, this. Now, here's a story on that. For about 15 years there ago. There was a motion made, councils, before we do get way off track I here. I want to answer the question. Go ahead, but try okay. to, go absolutely, but try to keep 15 it a little years short. ago, this issue uh, reared its head, and Mayor Gucci appointed me to the council, uh, the advisory council. We had over 400 people in Everett Square protesting the, the noise levels then. It quieted down up until the three or four months ago. So, you know, you. We're reasonable people. We live near the airport. There's going to be a little noise, okay? But 12 years ago, 14 years ago, it was a serious issue. They did come up. They sent a couple of public relations. It's the wind flow. It's a southeasterly direction. And there was a new runway built at the time, as you recall, that was supposed to solve all this stuff. The runway was built, and we still have the issue. And I hope that answers the question. <coughs> yes, it does. And the other comment, I'd like to, I'm sure we'd all like to be on this piece with Council Matuski. I would, if I could add my name to this, 
or uh, at least speak for myself anyways. I'm so happy that my colleagues <coughs> will join me on this resolution. So I'd like to amend this to include the entire Everett City Council because they know me at Massport and uh, <laughs> believe me, they know me. So the entire City Council, oh, it's the whole council, not just that Matuski, okay. <laughs> Is there a yeah. second? Second. Second. <coughs> Motion made and seconded to Thank you, sir. amend this by adding the entire Everett City Council and refer to our next meeting. All those in favor? Opposed, the ayes have it. Item number 36, ordinance sponsored by Councilor John F. Hanlon, in accordance with provisions of Chapter 3, Section 1 of the City of Everett Charter. <laughs> <coughs> Chapter 7 163 of the revised, revised ordinances of the City of Everett. The salary for the position of mayor shall be 160000 annually, effective January 1st, 2018, and 185 annually, effective January 1st, 2020. Councilor Hanlon. Mr. Chairman, uh, in, a, in a course of uh, reviewing the budget, um, of course, I always look back to when, when I was the mayor and, and what had happened. And when I, when I was the mayor, and that was 10 years ago, uh, I was making eighty-five thousand dollars a year. The department heads were making roughly between forty and fifty, maybe fifty-two thousand dollars a year. Uh, in that amount Council, of time, I don't want to cut you off, but our clerk of committees informed me that we should suspend Rule Thirteen. Oh yes, before uh, we speak make about this. Suspend Rule Thirteen E. I should have done that. Motion I'm sorry made and second to suspend yeah. Rule Thirteen E. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Go ahead, Councilor. Okay. So anyway, uh, in my review, I, I found that most of those department head salaries have doubled, while the mayor's salary ha has not doubled. And I don't have to go into what has happened in our city uh, since in the last 10 years. Uh, when, you know, things were much simpler. Uh, when, when I was the mayor, things have really gotten much more complicated today. We have, uh, you know, new buildings being built, new, new, com new people coming into the city of Everett. Our tax rate, I mean, our tax assessment is, is going, on, uh, going out, of, out of sight, you know. It's, it's just some of these things that are happening now, and they're happening too fast. We have, we have people that are now working for the city that, that never worked for the city before. These are people that specialize in, in certain areas. Their salaries are all in the three digits, and um, I mean hundred thousands. And we need someone uh, of, of that kind of a quality to run them. And I'm talking about the mayor. I'm talking about a mayor. Uh, what I did is I did a quick study on some salaries in, in the city of Everett to show what I'm talking about. And um, some of these things I have rounded off to make it nice and easy, but not rounded off that greatly. And I'm um, starting with uh, two scenarios, three scenarios. One is that the mayor's salary on January uh, uh, will be 2000, I'm sorry, be $138,000. Uh, or if we give him an, uh, the $160,000, or another scenario is if we give 160000 then two years later make him 85000 So I've taken 10 of the highest ranking salaried uh, employees of the city of Everett, and I can compare them with, with, with the mayor's salary. Um, the mayor starts at $138,000. And I want to point out that one of the departments had to show uh, does not make the, as much as the mayor, mayor will be making. But I, I wanted to show that at the current period, the mayor now will make, or on this particular uh, person, makes $8,760 more per year than the person in this range. And this person, this range that I'm talking about has a low and a high. I'm talking about the low. The low person in this range makes $8,760 less than the mayor. In 2025, the mayor will still be above that particular salary, but it'll be only by $1,689. So you can see that they're catching up. If we do the $160,000 salary, um, the mayor is behind all of these, all of these things except this, this one particular salary that I was talking about. Um, and that's um, by a lot. I mean, I'm talking about the mayor making 187,000 in 2025 as compared to 204, 239, 218, 212, 196, 200,000, 172,000, skipped 160,000, 172,000, and uh, 197,000 and 172,000. They're all gonna be making more than the mayor, all of them in, in year 2025. If we would do this $160,000 and then increase it to $185,000, we will have the mayor making less than one department, 
less than the second department, less than the third, making more than the fourth person I've looked at, but only by $8,000. The next person by $4,000. The next person by, looks like $25,000, $25,000, and $8,000. So even if we give them all of that, the mayor will still, there will still be departments that are making much more than the mayor would be making in the year 2025. So I thought that it would be appropriate if, appropriate if we raise this mayor's salary to those two figures, $160,000, and then in 2020, $185,000. The increases would be the normal increases that, that is 2% increase, I think, that the mayor gets per year. So it, he would wind up with the $204,000 and still be behind several other departments and very close ahead of other departments. So I think it's right that we, you know, the mayor should, should make at least maybe not the top salary in the city, but close to, and, and above a lot more. So the reason I put that in is because I think the mayor deserves it. I think he should be a salary that's commensurate with what he does, what his job is, and how he works. Uh, uh, you know, he's out, try to reach him, and he's not in the office. Try to find out where he is, and you'll find out, I find out where he is, he's at other places. He's not home, he's not other places, he's, he's working, he's doing his job, you know. Um, I wish that I could have been sightful enough 10 years ago to know these things were going to happen, but I didn't, so, uh, and I didn't have much that much time in office either. So, uh, but anyway, I'm putting in for this here, and I hope that you all agree that the mayor would be worth that kind of money. So, thank you very much. Councilor McLaughlin. Thank you, Mr. President. This, uh, I'm going to ask my colleagues to allow me to just read something that I pre, pre wrote this weekend due to the fact that some issues I have to keep my notes in track. In April of 2011, I decided to run for Common Council in the city. I ran on one principle, and I think one principle that we all share in the city of Everett, and it's the better Everett. It's not to better ourselves, it's not to better our friends, it's not to better people working in the city, it's to better the city of Everett. That being said, I couldn't have imagined what it was going to lay before us in the coming years and where we are today. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Again, pl pledging that we would always work collaboratively to move the city forward in a positive manner. Um, I have, we've proved that many times, never taking a vote to benefit ourselves or to benefit our friends, but to benefit the city of Everett. I can speak personally that none of us are guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are guaranteed to benefit from anything that we do in these chambers. It's about moving the city forward. It's about leaving the city better than we found the city of Everett. That's what we do every day in the city of Everett. In the chambers, in the administration, we are always trying to move the city forward and leave it better than the way we found it. The mayor has done a tremendous job. I don't think anybody can disagree that the mayor has really moved the city forward, but he hasn't done it on its own, his own. He's done it collaboratively with us, us as a group. I think this is just another step of moving the city forward. It's another step of be leaving Everett better than the way we found it. It's not about bettering one individual or helping out our friends or not helping out our friends. It's about leaving a position better shaped than we found it. And that's the goal that we all share in these chambers. We may disagree at times in these chambers, but at the end of the day, we all truly care about the city of Everett or we wouldn't be sitting here tonight working as hard as we do on a regular basis. So with that being said, I honestly and truly ask my colleagues to join us tonight in voting for this salary increase because it's not for the current mayor, it's not for the current administration. It's to leave a position better than the way we found it. And that's the reason why I'll be proudly supporting this tonight and I hope my colleagues will join me. Thank you. Councilor Capone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I look at the numbers and the first thing I'll say is I'll, I'll preface my remarks. This is not personal. This is, I'm look as, as we've all said, it's not an individual, it's the position. So I look at that and what we have to keep in mind is part of being a public servant is community service. And you, nobody from top all the way down expects to be making the kind of money you make in the private sector when you work in the public sector. And you have to keep in mind at the end of the day, regardless of what progress is being made or, or what's happening here, there, or anywhere, at the end of the day, this is the taxpayer's money. This is others' people money that we are spending. And we need to be mindful of that. Every time we take any vote that involves finances, we need to be mindful of that. This council, uh, I looked at some of the past years, the, the, the position of the mayor, fiscal year 13 was $85,000. Is that a fair compensation? 
for your top executive? No, it's not. And I looked at some of the, the numbers that shifted over the years. It came up a little bit, came up 10,000 here, 10,000 there. That's fine. It's a little bit more commensurate. This body back in May of 2016 voted to bring the mayor's salary up to $138,000. And I think that that's reasonable salary. I voted against it at the time. Again, my position being finances. That's what it is. But I can't say $138,000 is an unfair figure. Then several months later, longevity was introduced. And that increases $10,000 per term for whomever the mayor is. And there was a one-time bonus payment for $10,000 per past term. I think in this particular case, it'll work out to be $30,000 or $40,000. So the difference between what was voted by this body in May to take effect on January of 2018 from what in fiscal year 1385 was clearly a low figure is a $53,000 increase. Now tonight, we have a piece in to bump that number by $22,000, and then two years later, bring it up to $185,000. In my, my own personal opinion, and it's just my opinion, and I'm not asking anyone to do anything that they're not comfortable with, I personally am not comfortable with those figures. And so I won't be supporting it tonight, and it is not a reflection of who the current mayor is or progress this community has made, which is undeniable. This community has made tremendous progress, much of it under the leadership of this current mayor with this current body. But my personal opinion, those figures at this particular point in time, I think are a little too excessive, so I won't be supporting it. Councilor Hamlin. Just one point, Mr. Chairman, and that is on longevity. Uh, longevity applies to the current mayor. It will not apply to any new mayor that comes along because longevity, as you know, is, is based on the amount of years that you put into service. So uh, it might count for this one, but it won't count for any others until they're there for 10 years or so. Thank you. Are there any other comments, councilors? Is there a motion? Is there a second? second. Motion made and seconded for favorable action on item number... 36. Please call the roll, Mr. Clerk. Councilor Capone. No. I'm sorry, my mic wasn't on. Councilor Capone? No. Councilor Della Yes. Councilor DeFlorio? Yes. Councilor Hammond? Yes. Councilor Matuski? Yes. Councilor McKinney? Yes. Councilor McLaughlin? Yes. Councilor Paul Tyler? Yes. Councilor Sani? Yes. Councilor Simonelli? Yes. Councilor DePero? Ten yeas, one nay, Mr. President. Is there a motion for reconsideration on the piece? So moved. Motion made and seconded for reconsideration on item number 36. Mr. Clerk? Councilor Capone? Yes. Councilor Del Sola? No. Councilor DeFlorio? No. Councilor Hanley? No. Councilor Matuski? No. Councilor McKinnon? No. Councilor McLaughlin? No. Councilor Napolitano? No. Councilor Sine? No. Councilor Simonelli? No. Councilor DePiro? No. One yay, ten nays. President. Reconsideration has failed. The item has been enrolled and will be back before us next meeting for ordainment. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor? Opposed? The ayes have it. Meeting adjourned.